Where are we going, Mr. Dillon? Well, I don't know where you're going, Chester, but I'm going to get myself a haircut. Say, I need a haircut, too. I cost two bits these days, you know. Well, I didn't say I was going to get one, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> Not till the weather gets hot, anyway. Well, I hope you're saving up for it, Chester. You know a man oughtn't to have to spend money on things like haircuts? Well, then why don't you get married and let your wife cut it for you? Mr. Dillon, that'd be like buying a whole cow just to get one piece of steak. <laughs> You know, Chester, I got an idea. Your hair is going to get longer and longer. <laughs> Look, it's no more than down to my nose now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me, mister. What's the matter with you? Can't you see good? I was looking at my hair. Well, maybe you could look at it easier if I scalped you. All right, now, just take your hand off that knife, mister. I said I was sorry. Anybody bumps into Lou Quiller better be sorry. Take it easy, mister. He didn't hurt you. Now, what are you cutting in on this for? There's enough fighting in Dodge without anything as silly as this. What do you care about how much fighting there is? That's my job. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Oh. Okay, Marshal. But you better keep your friend here off the streets before he gets himself killed. Did you say your name's Quiller? <laughs> you never heard it, Marshal. I ain't wanted nowhere. Maybe not. But the way you're going, you soon will be. Yeah. I'm going to get me a drink. Mean, ain't he? Yeah, he's just another hard case, just Dodge's full of them. Well, here's the barber shop. I'll be back at the office in about a half hour. Yes, sir. Right over here, Marshal. Uh, hello, Titus. You know, you are real lucky, Marshal. This place was full up an hour ago. Oh? Uh-huh. You can hang your coat and stuff on the wall there. Uh-huh. That's right. Now, the rate you're going, Titus, Dodge will have a lot of pretty respectable-looking citizens by nightfall. A man ought to get his hair cut every month or so, Marshal. Yeah? I keep telling them all that. It, here, let me get this sheet across you. Yeah. Here. They'd sooner go around looking like wild animals. And that's what they are, just plain wild animals. Is that they so? don't think of nothing, Marshal, but drinking and fighting and tearing things apart. Oh, have a chair, young fellow. I'll be ready for you in a few minutes. I don't want a haircut, I want a shave. Well, I'll take care of you. Just hang your coat up right there next to Marshal Dillon's. Marshal Dillon? Are you really a marshal, mister? Yeah, that's right. Marshals and sheriffs are one of a kind. Killed my pa. That's what happened. Now, is that so? Now, who's your pa? My pa's dead. Back in Alamosa. I got a grudge against lawmen. I got a grudge against all of them. Look, fella, why don't you sit on over there? Huh? You're awful drunk for so early in the you day. You shut up, barber. So that's your coat over there, huh, Marshal? Yes, it's his. It's going to be real easy. I think I'll shoot me a marshal. Watch. I got a gun under this sheet, fella. No, you ain't. It's pointing right at your belly. Your gun belt's hanging over there under your coat. You can't see it, can you? No. But it's there. You're gambling with your life, fella. You start for your gun and you're going to die. I don't believe you. Now get out of here. Go on. Walk out that door. Slow now. you was going to have to kill him, sure, Marshal. Darn fool kid. It wouldn't have been easy, Teeters. What? I bluffed him. My gun's hanging under my coat over there. Is that so? (laughs) Well, see, that's great, Marshal. You sure made a fool of him. Wait till I tell everybody about this. (laughs) Forget about it, Teeters. You what? Nobody likes to be made a fool of. Might drive that boy into doing something to try to prove he isn't one. Oh, Okay, Marshal, I won't say nothing. Yeah. Good. (laughs) 
Let's go back. There's got to be out of this. All I heard was Georgie. Oh. Didn't hear a thing. Once, once again, we'll start from the top. Stand by. Oh, uh, Sam, give me a beer, huh? Right up, Marshal. Evening, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Say, that's a nice dress. <laughs> Thanks. Mr. Jonas down the store ordered it for me. Huh? Just came in on the Santa Fe from Kansas City today. <laughs> you know, Mr. Jonas was going to order me a couple of vests. Uh-huh. That was last fall, I think. Uh, better let me order them for you. Uh, I'm afraid it wouldn't work. He'd smell a rat. You got a pretty country way of putting things, Matt. No wonder you have to carry a gun all the time. Here's your beer, Marshal. Oh, thank you, Sam. Oh, say, speaking of guns, I heard about you at the barber shop today. Oh, you did? Teeters has been telling everybody about it. Yeah, I told him to keep it quiet. Well, he should have. That boy's name's Dave Robbins. He was in here a while ago, and everybody was laughing at him about it. Yeah. He said he was going to dig Teeter's tongue out of his head. I think that's how he put it. When did he leave, Kitty? Just a little while ago. With that ornery-looking Lou Quiller. Quiller? Yeah. Now, how did they happen to get together? Do well, you think there might be trouble, Matt? <laughs> I better go find young Robbins, Kitty. I'll see you later. Sure. <laughs> Well, I finally located him, Mr. Dillon. Huh? He's right next there in the oasis. Yeah, he would be in the last bar we looked at. Is Quiller with him? Yes, sir. Yeah. There's Dave, Mr. Dillon. He's sitting alone now. Now, will you stay here, Chester? Yes, sir. Hello, Dave. How'd you know my name? I heard it. You mind if I sit down? Wouldn't do much good if I did, would it? Uh, Dave, tell me about your pa, huh? What happened to him that got you so mad? It's none of your business. <laughs> well, you were about to shoot me for it this afternoon. Nah, even drunk I wouldn't have shot you. Not like that. I was bluffing, too, Marshal, and I was awful drunk. I, uh, told the barber to shut up about all that, Dave. You did? Well, I kind of figured that you wouldn't be very proud of it. Why do you care how I'd feel? Dave, there are enough hard cases around now. L- like Quiller over there. And you're about to become another one. Now, you leave Teeters to me. I'll talk to him. Stopping his talk now won't do any good... People are already laughing at me. Look, Dave, I've been bluffed myself. It's nothing to be ashamed of. No. Look, I, I, I'd still like to hear about your paw. Uh, you say a sheriff killed him out in Alamosa? Shot him in the back. Pa wasn't even armed. Well, why did he do it? Pa was on to him. There was a bank hold up and nobody got caught, Marshal. And then Pa found out the sheriff had some of the money. Oh, after the sheriff killed Pa, I started to tell people the truth about it. But they didn't believe me. He put a rope on my feet, Marshal, and dragged me out of town. Oh, well, that's bad, Dave. But uh, lawmen are like any other people that are all different kinds. Maybe. Now, that, that's true. You think about it. Uh, and Dave, don't let... Quiller talk you into anything, huh? <laughs> yeah, now have me some more of those chili peppers, Matt. <laughs> okay. There you are, Doc. Uh, thank you. Mm. You know, those peppers will make your hair straight, Doc. Oh, ten years ago, they might have. 
<laughs> you know, you must have been quite a lady killer then. I still keep my end up, Matt. Yeah, but you're slowing down, Doc. I've been noticing it. Oh, is that so? How would you know anything about that? Well, uh, word gets around. Doc. Oh, Matt, you're the biggest liar in Dodge. Outside of General Parsley Smith. <laughs> well, you think the general's a liar? He claims he was on Robert E. Lee's staff. Says he rode into the Shenandoah Valley with Lee back in 63. Well, maybe he did. Oh, maybe. You know what he really was, Matt? He was the regimental butcher. Well, you can't expect him to go around bragging about that the rest of his life. Mr. Dillon? Doc? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir? I, I just come by the barbershop, Mr. Dillon. There's quite a crowd outside. Well, what for? Well, sir, I got to look through the window, and Teeters is laying there with blood all over him. He looks dead to me. What? Young Dave Robbins is laying there, too. I think they went and killed each other. All right, let the doc through here, please, will you? Yeah, let me through. Pardon me, please. Will you let us through? I, I think the door is locked, Mr. Dillon. Stand back a little, I'll kick it over. Stand back. Okay, doc, go on in. All right. Chester, uh, you stay by the door and keep everybody off. Yes, sir. Well, it looks, looks like they had quite a fight here, Matt. Well, let's find out if they're dead, Doc. Take a look at Teeters first. All right, we'll see now. Uh, oh, 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 yes, I thought so. What? He's got a broken jaw, man. Well, that wouldn't kill him. His neck's broken, too. And he's dead. Oh, poor fella. All right, let's look at Dave Robbins here. Uh, let's see. Uh, he isn't dead. I can see him breathing. Let's see. Got a lump on the back of his head, that's all. Here, Dave, Dave, Dave. Oh. Wake up, wake up. Oh, yes. Oh, he must have oh. fallen and hit his head, Matt. Open your eyes, Dave. Oh. Yes. Doc. Yes. Doc. Yes, you're all right here. Just sit up a little bit here. Oh. oh. He hit me, Doc. He hit me with his gun. There's no gun here, Dave, except yours. And I think I better take that right now. Marshal, Teeters is dead, ain't he? Yeah, he's dead. You must have hit him awful hard, Dave. You broke his neck. I didn't hit him. I tried to stop it. What happened, Dave? I didn't want to come here at all. But Quiller talked me into it. Quiller, huh? Yeah, he said we'd scare him a little and make him stop talking about me. But then Teeters didn't scare and... Quiller started beating him up. I tried to stop him, Marshal. Well, you're the one that's been threatening Teeters, Dave. What's Quiller care about him? I don't know. I don't know why he did it. Mm, you're going to have a hard time convincing anybody of that story, Dave. You believe me, Marshal? If we find Quiller, I'll know whether to believe you or not. He won't be in Dodge. Not now. Well, you got any idea where he might be? Well, he said something once about a deserted cabin he'd found up on Walnut Creek. But I don't even know where that is. I do. We'll look around Dodge first, and then we'll ride north. You mean you're taking me with you, Marshal? One of you is going to hang for murder, Dave. And as soon as we find Quiller, I'll know which one. Hey, maybe Quiller ain't running at all, Mr. Dillon. Maybe he was coming up here anyway. No reason why he should run. If he isn't guilty, Chester. I might have known nobody would believe me. Nobody ever has. Oh, you ain't hung yet, Dave. Hey, look. There's a cabin. The one Quiller told me about is hid under a bluff of some kind. Well, there's people in this one. A woman out back there. See her? It's not much of a cabin. I don't think they've even finished building it. Well, it looks like somebody drove a herd of cattle over it. I swear and declare, some people just ain't got any pride. Imagine keeping a woman in a shack like that. What's she planting, you suppose? And whatever it is, it won't grow. I don't see no water around here. Pull out, boy. Oh. oh. Let's leave the horses here. It 
Look at that horse out there, Mr. Dillon. If that ain't the sorriest animal I ever laid eyes on. That horse is bedrock, Chester. Somebody's rode him too hard. Well, then they ought to shoot him. Uh, hello, ma'am. Who are you? Uh, my name's Dillon, ma'am. Is, uh, your husband around? No. He ain't around. Not no more. Not since this morning. Oh. Uh, is that a grave you're digging, ma'am? I made it real deep. I didn't want no sign of a grave here. Well, what happened to him? How'd he die? Man killed him. What? Rode by here this morning and killed him. Who rode by and killed him? I don't know. What difference does it make? Look, ma'am, I'm a lawman. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Now, will you tell me what happened, please? A Marshal, huh? You catch him and hang him, Marshal, but it won't bring my husband back. I gotta live here all alone now. I ain't even got a baby. I always wanted a baby. Can you tell me what the man looked like, ma'am? He come out on that horse out there. He took ours. My husband didn't want him to. He tried to stop him. I'll bet it was Quiller, Mr. Dillon. He's that mean. Was he a tall man, a black mustache, carrying a bowie knife in his gun belt? A knife. That's what he killed my husband with. Said he wouldn't waste a bullet on a dirt farmer. Sure sounds like him. Maybe you'll believe me now, Marshal. Quiller knows he can't hang twice. What's he care how many men he kills? Was he still heading north when he left here, ma'am? Over that way, Marshal. I stood here and watched him till he was plumb out of sight. Yeah. Well, uh, is there anything that we can do for you? Bring the horse back, unless he's ruined him like he done that one there. You'll have a horse, ma'am, I promise you. We'll stop on our way back. Goodbye. Don't bring that man here. I don't want to see him. All right, ma'am. I won't. Oh, that poor woman. He killed Teeters, too. You believe me now, don't you, Marshal? Just because he killed this man don't prove he killed Teeters, Dave. Now, wait till we find him. He'll own up to it. He's got to. He might, Dave, if we can take him alive. Oh. If you don't take him alive, then, then I'm in a bad spot, ain't I? Let's find that cabin before it gets dark. Ain't he ever coming back, Chester? Mr. Dillon knows what he's doing, Dave. Doggone to take it easy. Yeah, sure. Now, I got nothing to worry about. Yeah. There he comes now. We sit here too long, Quiller, sure to get wind of us. No, he ain't. He's probably laying around that cabin thinking he's safe as if he's in Texas. What'd you find, Marshal? Well, he's there, all right, but he's getting ready to move on. How you know? He's saddling his horse. Well, how are we going to stop him? Without shooting him, I mean. That's a long chance, but maybe we can surprise him and get the drop on him. Now, we're going to have to split up, Chester. One of us will wait on this side, and the other will have to go across the top of that bluff and wait on the other. All right, sir, I'll go. No. No, you stay with me, Chester. What? Dave, here's your gun. My gun? Take it. I don't understand, Marshal. You go across the bluff. We'll wait for him if he rides out that way. How do you know I won't warn him and take sides with him? I don't know, Dave. Now get moving. Okay. Mr. Dillon, you're, you're, you're taking an awful chance. He's got his choice, Chester. If he makes the right one this time, he just might go on making them. It's worth the chance. Now come on, let's get over there. Chester, this is far enough. Quiller's getting on his horse. If he rides this way, we'll throw down on him at the same time. He might be surprised enough to give up. He's mounted. Yeah. Hope, look. 
He's going the other way. I sure hope Dave's going to stop it. There he is. Hold it, Fuller. Get your hands up. No, you don't. Come on, Chester. He killed him. He went for his gun, Marshal. You shot him right in the head, Dave. He'd have killed me if I hadn't. Yeah. But now I... I can't prove nothing about Teeters. Maybe I should have let him shoot me. It sure beats hanging. Oh, I can't win no how, Marshal. You could have warned him, Dave. It'd have been a fight with Chester and me, but you might have won that. I know. I was thinking about it all the time I was crossing the top of that bluff. Maybe I should have. But it's too late now. Here's my gun, Marshal. Now, keep your gun, Dave. Keep it? I believe you about Teeters. Marshal, I... I... I believed you right from the start, but I wanted you to prove something to yourself, Dave. And I think you have. Marshal, I... I'd kind of like to go back to Dodge with you. Maybe show everybody I ain't what they thought. Good, Dave. We'll be there by morning. <laughs> 